And our system is so insecure right now, like any first world country can hit a button and destroy any country's entire power. That's how insecure we are right now. And at any point, like like this, the Pentagon gets hacked into every day. You know, the power grids that run everything get hacked into every day, but no one shuts it down because, and it's only a matter of time until someone does. And the reason it's not happening is because these hackers that have that ability to do that, they'd rather make money off of their skills and live a great life they don't want to just shut everything down and hurt their families. Their families are going to die too when they do it. But one day, someone might slip through the cracks. You know, maybe he took a little too much acid and he doesn't give a fuck anymore. He's going to take the whole thing down. And maybe that'll save us. Or maybe we'll have another Carrington event coming from the sun. Solar flare, electromagnetic pulse is going to wipe out all the electronics on Earth. But, you know, we're not going to change this Agenda 21 stuff. We're not going to change this carbon tax stuff. Like, nothing's going to change. Like, it's, it's over. But, something might destroy the whole system. Do you see, I mean, I don't know, maybe... To try and hopefully I'm not still in the system when that happens. But I'd be okay with it because then the Earth might still survive. See, from, from my perspective, everything, I mean, I, I agree with you that there are lots of problems in this world and in our civilization, but I think that our civilization has helped people and has tremendous potential to help more people. It's humans helped, and, and, and um, help the people that are collecting your taxes. Well, but I think it, I think it also helps, you know, the, the, someone because, you know, they're not going to get their head bashed in with a rock like a primitive person That happened is. much, there was much less murder in primitive times. Much less. Well, I could agree with you. There was less. Western, yeah, there Western, wasn't like large scale war, but I think interpersonal. No, violence. even interpersonally. Weston A. Price, you know Weston A. Price is? You should look into him. He went around the world and studied primitive tribes, yeah. trying to look for who the healthiest people yeah. were. The main point he found is that, um, the main point he found was that uh, basically yeah. meat diets mainly those that are the most meat and the most raw meat are the healthiest. That's the main point. He also found that primitive tribes had absolutely no crime. They had none. They didn't have prisons, they didn't need prisons. Once in a while someone would do something. It was very rare, it's not like today. People kill each other now for money. You know, this is, it's, it's all, why, why are people killing each other today? It's the drug war. That's probably the main cause of murder in America, is the drug war. Because people are killing each other over the crack they're selling or whatever, and it's all for money. Why are people, why are, who else is getting killed? The people we're bombing. And then it's the people who come here and bomb us because they're mad they got bombed. And it's all, it's all stuff that wouldn't exist without civilization. Well, what about getting more down to, so, I mean, I, I'm a believer in science and uh, so in evolution, there's this idea of there are finite resources and as organisms, we compete for those finite resources. And that's where I would say violence really comes from. So whether you have money or not, there's still a finite that resource. Existed. That existed, but it, uh, it always existed. Violence is natural. Like, you know, yeah. wolves fight with each other over the top spot. Rams ram each other in the head, kill each other. Like animals in their own species kill each other. It's like a part of life. And uh, it's a part of life that people are missing. It's like, uh, why do you think people are going to all these football games to watch these giant men smash into each other? Why do you think they're playing these video games all day? Killing, killing, killing. It's because it's a part of us. Well, and I'd rather have that than have no freedom in my life. I'd rather live my life till 30 with freedom and with health than live like this in a fake world where I'm a slave, paying taxes, breathing shit air, eating food. Like, I'm, the milk I drink is illegal. I'm not even allowed to drink the milk I want. So, I have to work so hard, like, uh, what I say is our, in this world, you're not we have, free. But we have, have freedom. Well, but we have so many civilizations in this world that you can choose 
to live in and what's a new civilization yeah. well Please. personally i like this one that i live in i like the united states well, you know, and doesn't I, like it well the people in libya whose entire country got destroyed the people in syria whose entire country got destroyed the people in iraq whose entire country got destroyed the people in mexico who are living as slaves touching pesticides all day and dying from cancer there's all sorts of people that don't like the civilization that well, you're well, living in. I agree that there are problems, but the problem All the people that are in prison, the biggest prison country in the entire world, yeah, America. Yeah, that's also a problem. So this is, the, this is the society you like? You like giving a third of all your earnings so to pay for the system that's enslaving you? I don't know how you like that. Well, so my approach is that we we look at these problems and we figure out how to address them. You and can't we don't address them. This is this is why civilization exists, so the elites can parasite off of us. But I think we have improved as a society. So no, we like, haven't. If you look at the ancient, if, if you look at feudal feudal Europe, right? I mean, if now we're looking at a larger time span. But feudal Europe was better. The American Revolution was over like a 2% tax. That was like what the American Revolution was about, 2%. In feudal times, it wasn't much. In feudal times, you gave maybe like 10% of what you grew to the king. And you had healthy food, and, you know, you were fine generally. Now it's 30%, your food is poisoned, your air is poisoned, your water is poisoned, your government's killing people, and then the people you're killing come here as refugees and kill us. And it's just shit. So, Thank you. I don't, I don't know. Like, you, you think that like in medieval Europe, where people like, do they have back access to better nutrition, or what? Like, or I, I'm not sure that. Um, uh, it was bad too. It's all bad. All civilization is bad. But at least their civilization isn't destroying the entire planet. At least their civilization didn't lead to the entire Pacific Ocean being full of radiation. At least their civilization didn't put, you know, thousands of ticking time bomb nuclear reactors all over the planet that are just waiting to, you know, you know how long it's going to take for the radiation from Fukushima to, you know, heal? Yeah, I mean, but all, all We're destroying the entire yeah. planet. All the genetically modified seeds, they're cross-pollinating with the natural seeds. Yeah. We're not going to be able to get rid of it. We're destroying the planet. I would say all engineering is is a science of trade-offs. And yes, certainly. Why trade-off? Why not just be natural? Why not just be healthy? Why not just be free? What's wrong with freedom? Well, because there's a trade-off there, whether we acknowledge it or not. If, if I live in a, if I don't have civilization, there are less options. You're domesticated. Me. Why do you like being domesticated? Well, I wouldn't refer to myself as domesticated. You are domesticated. You're vegan. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on, on your definition of terms, but my definition of domestication, domesticated is probably different from... Well, you from, pay your taxes, right? Yes, but I wouldn't put... Well, you're domesticated. If paying taxes means domesticated, then, 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 then that means I'm domesticated. You, you don't but, have any of your but natural instincts anymore. But, if you had your natural instincts, yeah. if a cop came up to you because you were, you know, smoking a plant they don't like, like cannabis. Yeah. And they try to put you in a fucking car and kidnap you. Your natural instinct is to fucking claw their eyes out. And But what are you going to do? You're going to go, okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Because I don't want to be killed. Because I know, I know what reality is. But I'm domesticated. I know I am. And you are too. And we're all domesticated. Because I pay my taxes. I fucking stop for the police when they want me to. So I'm sympathetic to what you're saying. and That's the definition of domesticated. It's when your masters tell you the rules and you follow them. Well, we all have masters, whether there's a civilization or not. Primitive people did not have masters. Their only master was nature. Well, your master is also the person who's most powerful in your social group. If, if you piss off the wrong person in your social group, you're going to get a well, rock smash. Primitive fashion. tribes used to kill people. Like if their leader got a little bit too out of hand, yeah. they just killed them. But what if you, what, they didn't what if, let that shit happen? But what if your family didn't like you? What? What if your What if your family or your tribe doesn't like you? What? They didn't have these problems. They don't have all these different cultural things. Like, oh, I'm gay now, and my family doesn't like me. 
Like they didn't have that. They didn't have like, oh, I'm a Republican and my dad's a liberal and we don't like each other. Or, you know, they didn't have this stupid bullshit. Well, they didn't have those problems. They didn't but have they any had problems, problems like that. They were all the same. They had their own culture. You look at it, you look at the historical evidence, they didn't have these problems. But what is the historical evidence, right? Because we, we don't have Price Price is good. Wilhelm or Stephenson is oh, good. Oh, oh, where are they getting their evidence from? Because they, we don't they have went to the much. primitive tribes that are living the same way they lived for thousands of years. And so there's still tribes in the Amazon living the same way they did for thousands of years. They, they don't speak any modern languages. They're yeah. uncontacted. People can visit them today and you can see what their life is like. I'm good. I don't, I don't so, drink so you water. think that they don't have problems yeah, or you think that milk. their problems are trivial? What? You think that they don't have problems or you think their problems are trivial? From what I can see, they don't have problems. Like none whatsoever. From based on this historical evidence. So, so you think that, for example, if you were going to go to a, a primitive tribe, there'd be no social dynamics within that tribe that would lead to detention or theft or I did not see it based on the historical evidence. It's very, very minimal. Very minimal. Within the tribe, there was intertribal warfare, and you know sometimes people in a tribe fight, but it's like it's nothing compared to what we have today. And I think it's natural. All animals, they fight with, with each other. Not all animals, but a lot of animals do, and that's just nature. But you it's don't fighting think, like violence is a part of nature. But you don't think that and the, people crave it. That's why you have football and MMA I like and mosh boxing pits. and mosh pits. That's why we have all these stuff because you can't take it out of us until, you know, they fed us so much soy, it'll probably be gone eventually. But it's really hard to take out of us. And it makes you feel it's good. You know, people die, but it's good. The way that it used to be is good. Not fucking war, millions of people slaughtered depleted uranium, nuclear bombs. That's not good. But what about the good things that our civilization produces? There's nothing good. You think there's nothing good? Yeah. You think, you know, our great, our understanding of the universe to be able to stare at the cosmos and and, and to, 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 to both ask questions and try and answer those questions, to be able to have art, to be able to free ourselves from the, just the day-to-day -day of putting food in our mouth and, and just trying to survive. Because to me, that the, the day to day of a primitive person, that's that's not inspiring. What I mean, it's inspiring to me. But what about the primitive person who may lay on the grass, look outside the atmosphere and say, I wonder what that is. And I wonder if I can go there one day. And, and they went and they progressed our society to a place where we could do that. Why do you want to? Why do you care? Why do you? you yeah. so, so you're willing to have all this destruction we see around us, all this suffering, this, all this slavery, all this misery, just so we can know what's going on up there. And who the fuck knows if what they're telling you is true. Well, because, because there was suffering and death in, in this primitive world. In this Nothing world. like what we have today. And they weren't destroying the planet. And they had freedom which is the most important thing. Well, that's, There's nothing more important than freedom. We have a vegan movement because we don't want to destroy the planet. We're trying to live. Well, you're destroying it. Does. Well, I think you are too. How am I destroying it? When you, wait, so if, well, I, I mean, so this gets to a problem where, where we're coming from very fil different philosophical well, explain, grounds. Explain how I'm destroying okay. the environment. So if we go back to the cow, well, so we're more energy efficient. You, energy doesn't go anywhere. We shit it out, it goes back into the ground. The energy doesn't just disappear. Nothing disappears. Everything goes back into the earth and cycles back through all these cycles over well, and over of again. Course, the Nothing ever goes anywhere. Well, of course, there's still energy. The energy itself didn't disappear, but it, but it's not. Ex but in order for energy to be accessible, it has to be synthesized, and that's why the that's most accessible energy is shit. When you shit and it goes into the ground. That's the most accessible energy. Well, if there's glucose or, or fat still in that shit, then yes, and then there's energy in that shit. But there is. There's always, whatever you're eating, shit is just what your body didn't have time to digest. It's what your body pre-digested yeah. so that the earth can digest it too. That's why your body doesn't digest everything, so it can go back in. So, yes, but that shit, 
is coming from the food that you ate, which is the plant which did photosynthesis. Exactly, and it's going back in. Everything always goes back in. Yeah, so stay close to the energy source. It doesn't matter. It's No matter what you do, it's always going to go back to where it came from. So how do you explain? Everything goes back down. No matter who's eating what, it comes out of their ass and goes back down. But how would you explain then the energy, or the population differences between, let's say, apex predators versus autotrophs? Why does that matter? Because we're trying to understand what's happening with you, where, how That's how it's moving. supposed to be. That's the balance of nature. The balance of nature is less carnivores and more herbivores, which is how it is. And that's because of how energy... That's how it's always been. That's how it's always been. It's always been that way. That is nature. Why do you want to change that? Well, this goes back to what it's I was talking about, the different. naturalistic fallacy. So, but why do you want to change it? Was it broken before? What was broken before? Well, it's not a question of what's broken. It's about what... It's about creating a better world. The best world, it's already here. <laughs> and, 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 and we're ruining it. So the, the best world is that primitive tribe in the Amazon that still hasn't gotten into all the bullshit that we've gotten into. How do you know it's the best world? Because there's documentaries about them, you see how they live, and they're not destroying the planet. So, so, so there's an argument. They don't, they don't hurt each other. They don't murder each other. They control once, and they're free. They have freedom. How do you know that we're not headed towards a world that's better than than the one that we have now and the one that they have? Because things are only going to get worse. How do you know that? Because we're going in a trajectory, and we, because we know what's going to happen next. It's already been all laid out. Everyone's going to be herded into cities. We're going to be paying carbon taxes. We're not going to be allowed to eat meat anymore unless we're super rich. And uh, it's all it's all been mapped out. We're not going to be allowed to live in nature anymore. Our taxes are going to be higher. We're not going to be allowed to have our own cultures anymore. The only culture you're going to be allowed to have is MTV. That's you all. You don't think MTV can't go out of business? It doesn't matter if it's MTV or if it's VH1 or if it's fucking whatever fucking TV show people watch now. Like, that's the culture now. You're not going to have your own culture. We're going into just degradation and destruction, and it's only going to go further. And we know because it's been planned out a long time ago. Everything's gone according to plan until now, and it's going to keep going according to plan until something destroys society. So you think 200 years ago, people knew that we were going to be living in this world? Yes. If you read uh, Charles Galton Darwin's The Next Million Years, Charles Galton Darwin, who's related to Aldous Huxley, who wrote A Brave New World, who is the, uh, I think he's the grandfather of Charles Darwin. He wrote The Next Million Years, I think it was like 200 years ago. And we follow, everything he wrote in there came true. Because his family is the scientific elite that's in charge of us now, and you see them in all the positions. And it's gone according to plan, and it's gonna go according to plan. So for example, and there's nothing any of us are gonna do about it. For example, do you believe poverty is decreasing in the world? No. So, uh, how's poverty decreasing? People don't have jobs in America. You like, I like, I used to walk. I've been living in New York basically my whole life. The homeless people are increasing every year. More and more homeless people. I don't need anyone to tell me what's going on. I see it. But what about greater trends in the world? Do you, you think, so for example, in China, where they're developing their nation, you don't think they're lifting people out of poverty? No, China's the most miserable country on earth, probably. It might be the most miserable, but, but do you think that they're lifting people out of poverty? No. You don't think so? They put everyone into poverty. Mao killed, like what, 70 million people to put them into this system? Well, Mao might have put people into poverty, but I'm talking about, you know, let's say it's within the, the last 50 now. years. What about the last 50 years? If you, have, if you have too many kids, they just kill your kid. So they have the, In China, they have vans with, and yeah. they, they have everyone's data, they have everyone's blood type and everything, and they have vans that if like some high up official needs an organ transplant, they just have this van, they put them in there, and they just cut it out fresh and put it in there. Like, this is the society they're living in. And the UN says China is the model state for the world. Well, I agree with you. There are definitely problems in China. But, well, that's. But, so well, what, well, what, what are you well, saying then? 
I'm it's trying a to miserable say that place. They, they, they have nets around their factories uh, so yeah. people can't jump out and kill themselves. Well, do you see the Chinese people that come here? Go to Chinatown. Yes, life sucks to a certain they're, they're a like, lot. They're but... like they're like they're like this. They're just like uh, it's like sad. And it's because it they're from this shit country. They're not genetically like that. <laughs> so yes, I agree with you. Life sucks. People die. But but what I disagree and it's with all you is civilizations fall. But what I, that's where I disagree with you. This, none of this happened before civilization. You did not see these people you see in Chinatown in primitive society. Well, yes, because we didn't have Chinatown, but... <laughs> no, because we didn't have people that lived their whole life on rice. <laughs> but we had people... And like, just like one bowl of rice a day at that. We have people living like scavengers, eating rotting food and struggling to stay alive rather than being able to try and better themselves. What's bettering yourself? To be a better slave to society? Well, no, but it, bettering yourself is your own decision. You as an individual say, here are my goals. What are your try goals? Try for, for me personally? Yeah. Well, trying to create a vegan world is one of them. I have selfish goals as well. Creating more money and having a better apartment. That's, that's being a goal of a better mine. slave. <laughs> being a better producer and consumer. I don't see those producing things. more and consuming more so that your masters can consume more because you're domesticated just like I am but so these are these are my goals but but just because there's the a goals of a slave 